Right, well, our local history group were walking around the graveyard because we're looking at different um, local people and we just saw this one and we we're most curious to know why somebody from the Canadian Railway troops would be buried at St, at St. Michael's. Um, so we started to investigate it then. He was born in 1881 in Tilsley, which is towards Atherton. Um, but we did find out that he was married at St. Michael's. Um, he was married in 1903, and he married Mary Ellen Glazebrook. And then they went on to have a son in 1906, Thomas Edward. And at that time, he was a cotton weaver. Originally, um, when he got married, he was a collier. So he's obviously switched from being a collier to a cotton weaver, uh, both of which are common trades in this area. That might have been one of the reasons why he decided to emigrate, probably for, to try and get a better life for his family. And um, obviously he's decided to go to America. So he sailed out from Liverpool on the SS Laconia. That was in June 1913. And we know from information we've got that he went steerage class, which would be the very, very cheapest class you could possibly go. Um, and he, we know he arrived in Boston um, in June 1913 and then travelled onward to a place called Partucket, which is in Rhode Island. Um, his wife, Mary and Edward, sailed um, later on, on the 5th of August, but they went second class, so I presume he didn't want his family going in the really, really rough part of it. Um, it's worth noting that at this time, there were many cotton mills in, Par in Partucket, and a lot of the people that worked there were recruited from Bolton and Farmworth because they got the skills that were necessary for that. We don't know much about his life in between, but we do know that he enlisted in uh, 1917, at age 34, in Toronto, having travelled from America to Canada. Um, and he became a sapper in the 8th Battalion of the Canadian Railway Troops. Um, from what we know, these troops were created to repair and construct the railways. Um, they were actually on the fighting front in France and Belgium. Um, they were not military trained, but they were probably in a pretty dangerous position because they they would be in the open, and you know the enemy could get them very quickly. So I would think it was quite a tough thing to be doing. We don't know much about it after that, but we do know that James died on the 10th of March 1918 in the Ontario Military Hospital based in Orpington, Kent. So he's come back, he's been brought back to the UK, basically. Um, and he died of acute gastritis. Um, obviously things would be quite different then. They wouldn't have the medicines that they've got now. So, it, you know, it, it would just be the conditions that they were in as well. Um, he was actually buried three days later at St. Michael's Church by the Reverend Matthew Patterson. Um, we were intrigued by the fact, why would a Canadian be buried in this churchyard? What was the connection? You know, and so we wanted to find more out. I must be honest that my colleague did a little bit more than I did. Um, I have to mention Barbara because she did do a lot of it and put it all together. But it's, it's been a very interesting experience. And I think it's one that we, we need to share with other people. You know, the people of St. Michael's have probably walked past that grave many times and thought, yeah, well, who, who is he? And hopefully, by doing what we've done, we've now shared it with more people and hopefully they'll appreciate it. <laughs>